nearly got caught eating my popcorn. <laughs> Naughty. Now, Patrick Supplies, welcome back. <sighs> Ireland has a long history of using coal as a source of energy, with the country's first mines dating back as far as the 1600s. But just how bad were the conditions that these men worked in? Our Laura popped down to the Arigna Mining Experience in County Roscommon to get a real taster of the life of a miner. Michael, I'm delighted to be here with you today at the Arigna Mining Experience in County Roscommon. I've never been here before, and a huge amount of Irish history. You can kind of feel it almost. Tell us a bit about the history of the mine. Well, the mines that were going for hundreds and hundreds of years in Arigna here was creating quite a lot of employment. We had a power station that generated electricity from the national grid. That burned our coal up until 1992. At that stage, the power station was gone, and really that put an end to mining here. It was the only game in town, really. It was the only thing that got firms now, and really all that hectic around here. So mining was the, it was the big thing, yeah. You were a miner here for many years. Tell us about how you got into it. You were very young at the time. I was young, I was young at the time, but uh, like I grew up in a house, we say, on, on both sides of my family now. I had four uncles on my mother's side, four on my father's side. I was coal miners, and my own father. So I suppose I was... It was going to end up in the mines. However, they didn't, none of them wanted me to go here. They wanted me to stay in school, but I really hadn't all that much heat on the school. So. How did you feel being in a small space for a certain amount of time? Claustrophobic. <laughs> it wasn't the world now that wouldn't be. But I, I suppose, in a way, it was a job. You didn't think, you just got on with the job, you know? After watching a short documentary on the history of the Arigna mine, it was time to meet my tour guide for the day, Jimmy Nugent. Jimmy, nice you to doing? meet Welcome. you. How are Welcome you? Welcome the mine experience. Thank you. This now, is great. Here's your gear that you put on you. OK. Please. Whoa, thank and you. a helmet for you. Then it was time to get suited and booted, complete with safety gear and, of course, a hard hat, before venturing deep inside the Arigna mine. Now we'll go ahead in. This is where we said a little prayer here on the way in in the morning. There's a tradition for hundreds of years because there was no health and safety whatsoever in the mines. You wore a helmet if you supplied yourself. If you didn't supply it, you didn't have to wear it. Now, Laura, that's the gob. The that's, gob? Yes, that's the seam of coal. There's the height of it there now. So that's tiny. How did a grown man fit in there? Well, he fitted in there. He had to fit in there. He'd lie on his side, you know, and shovel out the coal. He'd have to go in for six yards. Was it safe? Well, it was safe. See them timbers there? That's what held it up. So it was safe enough. Now you can head in there if you want to yourself. I'll give it a go, will I? OK, no problem. This is the first time in my life I'm delighted to be five foot two. Jimmy, this is terrifying. All right, well, that's the height we had to work in now. I've only, come in, uh, I've only come in a few feet. You'd be lying on your side now. You wouldn't be on your belly like that there. You'd be lying on your side. On your there, side, like this? On your side there because you'd have to be shoveling out the coal, you know? Shoveling it the whole way down that way. I'm not a claustrophobic person, but I felt the walls were caving in on me going through that. Oh. Am I nearly there? Yeah, yeah, keep coming okay. out. I'd say this is the best view ever. <laughs> oh, that was an experience. Do you understand the way they had to work, yes? I, I have a new respect for all of the miners who were down here over the last few hundred years. That is, is not nice. Now, Laura, this was known as a straight road, right? Straight road? Yeah. It had to be dead straight for that wire rope, right? Now, when I started here, that wire rope was three mile long. It was a mile and a half in and a mile and a half out. And at any one time, there could be between 70 and 80 hutches and that between full and empty, right? Okay. Now, from once you came in here in the morning, there was no communication out to the hill, right? At all? No, there was no communication because no, there was no mobile phones or anything in them times, you know what I mean? All you had, there was two wires here and the lads that was putting the tips on the full hutches, it touched the two wires and that would sound a bell out on the hill and that would be a signal to start the rope, right? So we'll chance it. No, there was no conversation whatsoever in the mines, right? Because of the noise, you had steel hutches on steel rails, you had air picks going, so there was no conversation for once you came in in the morning till they left in the evening. So this is how the coal yeah, went I'm out of the mine and the empty hutches came back in to be... Came back in to be refilled, yeah? Oh. 
But Jimmy, how was the mood of all of the miners down here? It mustn't have been healthy for them to be in the damp and the dark all day long. What would that have done for them psychologically? Well, we worked hard and lived hard. In hindsight, we were down here in the dark all the time, you know, man, and that was the way it was at the time. All we had was our carbide lamp to keep a bit of light, you know what I mean? How dark was it, Jimmy? Well, now, I'll show you how dark it was. It was very dark. I'll just show you now. That's as dark as it was now. All day long? All day long. And you wouldn't have been able to see anyone else here? No, absolutely. Thank goodness for these lights now. Yes. It's been a fascinating tour around the Arignan Mines, and thank you so much. But you know what? I'm never going to give out about the Irish weather again. I need daylight. Absolutely fascinating, isn't it? Not for all the tea in China. Would you be a miner? Would you have I, done that I, wouldn't have, I wouldn't have done that filming. Laura's a brave woman. Mm. Anyway. Well done, Laura.